Well, I just want to thank everyone for being here today. Uh, I want to begin by thanking particularly our federal delegation uh, for being with us today. Uh, the Homeland Security Director, our uh, Administrator, and Chris Bell from FEMA. Uh, I want to personally thank uh, President Biden and his team for very quickly signing the, the emergency declaration that we sent up on yesterday. Uh, obviously, uh, the resources of the people here in Rolling Fork and throughout Mississippi need uh, is, uh, the help is on the way. And I think that's critically important. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to personally thank all of the volunteers that are here. Uh, what we've seen over the last 36 hours in Mississippi, on the one hand, has been heartbreaking see the loss and devastation of these communities, but on the other hand, has been inspiring and gives me great reason for optimism and quite frankly makes me damn proud to be a Mississippian because Mississippians have done what Mississippians do. In times of tragedy, in times of crisis, they stand up and they show up and they're here to help themselves, help their neighbors, and as we talk to individuals throughout uh, the devastation back here behind this first yesterday morning and then again today. What you see is that we've got a lot of good people that live in this great state. And I'm proud of them and I'm proud to represent them and I'm proud to take this opportunity to get as many resources here as we possibly can. As you know, and, and Secretary Mayorkas will mention this and I'm sure our FEMA director will as well, but in our emergency declaration, we started with the four counties that were hardest hit. Uh, clearly, um, and the president approved both public assistance and individual assistance uh, for the individuals in those communities, uh, and we appreciate that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we're going to continue working. We've got uh, MEMA and FEMA joint teams on the ground here, but also joint teams that are doing their thing uh, from our Mercy Operations Center in every region of our state, and we appreciate them. Uh, when we have these natural disasters, and unfortunately we have more than we care to think about, we appreciate our federal partners and them showing up. Finally, before I turn it over to the secretary, I just want to personally thank Mayor Walker here of the town of Rolling Fork, who just walked us through and had and led us and led the delegation through and have the opportunity to see an awful uh, large number of individuals that are hurting right now. Here are the stories about where people are where they're staying, who they're staying with, but more than anything, what I heard, and I hope everyone else behind me heard, is the people who have been displaced, whether they're staying with their son in Greenville or with someone in Clinton, every one of them has said, well, mom or dad or me, I've lived in this community for 30, 40, or 50 years. I want to continue to live in this community, and I can assure you we're going to do everything we can through housing and other means to get those people back in this community as quickly as we possibly can. And so with that, again, I want to reiterate my thanks to Secretary Mayorkas and his uh, working with the President to expedite uh, our emergency request. Thank him for being here on the ground in Mississippi. Uh, it matters to these people. It matters when their federal partners are here. It matters uh, when their uh, local representatives are here. And so Secretary Mayorkas, thank you for being here. Heartbreak and inspiration. Uh, we walked down uh, the street uh, of this uh, town, uh, seeing devastation on both sides uh, of the road. Uh, and Congressman Thompson and I uh, were able to speak with an individual who traveled from Houston, Texas, uh, just to help the people uh, of this town. Uh, and he said something I, I thought was very appropriate, very powerful, that one can see photographs of the devastation, but there's no substitute for actually seeing it uh, in person. And that is indeed uh, what we've come to do. We've come to see it in person, to communicate uh, to the people of Mississippi uh, that we are here, uh, not just today, uh, but for the long haul. Uh, it is heartbreaking to hear of the loss of life, to see the devastation firsthand. It is also, as the governor expressed, inspiring to see the people of Mississippi just the people of Mississippi, the people of this country, but to come to assist those in such a 
such dire need. It is also inspiring to see the first responders, the disaster response officials, the volunteers, even individuals who themselves have survived the disaster come rise and help uh, their fellow Mississippians in a time of such great need. The President has directed us to be here to assist the people of Mississippi, to be here on an enduring basis, not just through the response, but through the recovery as well. We are mindful of the fact that that will take time, but we are here for the time it will take. We see extreme weather events fully increasing in gravity, severity, and in frequency. And we have to build our communities to be best prepared for them, to prevent the devastation to the extent possible, to be able to quickly respond, recover, to keep ourselves resilient. We cannot do that alone. We need one another, and that is what we are here to communicate, that the federal government under President Biden's leadership is here to support Mississippi, to support the governor, to support the senators, Hyde uh, Smith and Wicker, to support the members of Congress, to support the local officials, uh, uh, Mayor Walker. We are here to speak for the people, and it's my honor to uh, continue to
Thank you. Thank you, Madam uh, Administrator. And we, I'm joined uh, with Congressman Thompson. Uh, Congressman, come on up here. Senator, come on up here. Well, I want us to stand together because uh, I, I want you to know that this delegation is shoulder to shoulder for Mississippi in this regard. Uh, we got a letter together of both of our senators, all four members of the House of Representatives yesterday afternoon, got it up to the President of the United States. I want to thank the President for calling each of us individually. I want to thank you for sending a member of this cabinet here. Uh, we don't always get cabinet members, but we thank you, Mr. Secretary and Madam Administrator. And uh, we are also in it with you for the long haul. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate Mayor Walker and uh, the state officials that are here, the law enforcement that have come in, and uh, we realize this is going to be a long process. Uh, let me say this before I turn it over to uh, Senator Hotsmith and Mr. Uh, Representative Thompson. We're, go we're about to spend some local and state money on this. We're going to do it in coordination with one of the best state emergency management teams in the country. We're, we're good because we have experience. We, we really would prefer if we didn't quite have as much uh, opportunity to show how good we are. But the governor has put a good team together and we've been visiting with them uh, yesterday and today. Uh, Madam Administrator and Mr. Secretary, we're going to spend some money. We're going to get the best guidance we can from Jackson and Washington, D.C. We want cooperation when we ask for reimbursement. We've had uh, problems in the past. I don't anticipate any problems because we're going to work with them. We're going to spend the money the right way according to the statute. And, uh, and we want a smooth transition of the offense fund. I, too, am impressed with the spirit of, uh, of can-do. Uh, there's no victimhood in this community today. And uh, we're there with you. We'll be back again and we're with you for a long time. Senator Hodgson. Thank you, Senator Wicker. I tell you, when I got the text Friday night, I was sure that I heard. I know it's bad, but until I got here yesterday, it is. I grew up in the city. Man, city? Yes. It is. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm here from Jersey. We're over at Savannah Artist Park Store. We got in a circle. I saw a gentleman talking about being in one of the houses, and he said after the storm, it got quiet, but I heard children crying. I'm so concerned about the mental welfare of these children and these adults way beyond this storm. You know, I have a staffer, a previous staffer, named Gibson Carter. When anybody in Washington, D.C. says, where are you from? He says, only for this convention. And they would look at him so strange like, this storm has put rolling board on the map. We have other areas. We have four counties that have damage. But this has truly highlighted this community. But I've got news for you. This community is going to come back. This community is going to come back strong. We are here to...
displaced families are taken care of. That's being done. We want to make sure that their priorities for their personal hygiene and everything that's needed is in place. This is being taken care of. We're well on our way. Bring it rolling toward that. So we're adding much more and to make it even better. On behalf of the entire Board of Albany, Again, we want to thank you. We want to let you know that without your help and volunteers, we have volunteers here from as far away as Arkansas, Tennessee, Louisiana. They're right here in the city of California helping us out. And we're thanking you for what everybody is doing to help us in this devastating time. We have to kind of remember those of us who are This is a Bible deal. And we were all taught that a family that prays together stays together. This is a family. A family of unity, a family of strength. And this is what we need to make this community come back once again. And lastly, I'm not only just a mayor of but I've lost personal friends. I'm also the local general. Now, I'm having to meet my families, those who have lost loved ones, and help them make it through. each of you who are here for 
all that you have done and all that you will do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for doing right. Thank you for doing right. Not just in these times of tragedy, but every single day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions, but before I do, I just want to remind everyone that we are here in Rolling Fork, and Rolling Fork is certainly um, devastating. But this disaster did not stop across that road right there. I made stops yesterday with the Humphrey County Sheriff in Silver City, and in Winona, and in Amory, and there's damage in Smithville, and Baden, and a lot of other places throughout our state. And so while we're all here today, Please know that we also are thinking about our friends and neighbors in those communities and the resources that the president approved yesterday after my declaration, my request for a declaration will be provided in those communities as well. And so we've got a lot of press here today, a lot of national press here today. And we're here in Rolling Fork because as the storm came across the Mississippi River, the most and the first major damage occurred right here. But it's not unique to here. As I walked through those communities yesterday, I promise you there's a lot of hurt in other places in our state too, and we're gonna keep them in our prayers as well. And so with that, I'm gonna open the floor to questions. Yes, ma'am, I'll start back here. question regarding the potential for severe weather that we have in the state of Mississippi this afternoon. Now, we have been monitoring that very, very closely. Obviously, uh, with the visits from uh, our friends from Washington, what we have found is that the vast majority of the most severe weather is expected south of Interstate 55. We are monitoring it very closely. We, we have our State Emergency Operations Center. We were there earlier today. We do have NEMA personnel there watching and prepared to dispatch whomever needs to be dispatched. In the height of the storm on Friday evening, we had over 300 search and rescue personnel situated throughout the state. A lot of state assets, a lot of local assets, and we are prepared that in the event that occurs this afternoon, we will be there. We will be there. Uh, Senator Wicker mentioned earlier, um, it's unfortunate, but we've had to deal with this, these kind of storms, a lot in Mississippi lately. A lot of you may or may not know, I got sworn in in January. In my first 14 months in office, we had 14 federally declared disasters. We've got a great team of emergency management professionals, not only at the, at the state EOC, but a great team at the local level as well. And yes, we have been in communication with them to be prepared. Uh, obviously, um, South Alabama uh, is also in those lines for potential severe weather today. What we've seen, much like the storm that occurred here Friday night, is in the 24 to 36 hours that are leading up to this afternoon, it appears that the risks seem to be getting worse and worse, not better. And when you stand here and see this, what feels like a beautiful weather day in Mississippi, Please be aware and please know if you are south of I-55 in Mississippi today, there are significant risks. We are prepared. Uh, we obviously have a lot of assets and a lot of resources from here to Amory and everywhere in between. But in Mississippi, we will have people prepared to go if and when necessary. I'm going to ask the Secretary to come in as well if he would like or, or any of the ones. I would say, I would say one quick thing and then I'll
have Mac here. As those of you who are local know, is our uh, emergency management director at the state uh, emergency operations center. Um, and I just asked him to make sure that we didn't not cover everything, and, and he says we're okay. So I'll start over here. Yes, sir. I will tell you that um, when we woke up yesterday morning, we immediately started doing damage assessments. Uh, when we woke up yesterday morning, or when many people woke up, a lot of people around here didn't go to bed, and a lot of people around the state didn't go to bed. For those who did wake up at, at daybreak yesterday, we had 23 confirmed fatalities, and we had four individuals that we knew that were missing, and we had not seen significant analysis of the Monroe County area yet because um, because of course this storm and what's made it so very dangerous is that it came in the middle of the night. Uh, it, it is, these things are very hard to see when they come in the middle of the night and you tend to see more fatalities. Well yesterday we increased the number of fatalities throughout the day from 23 to 25. The four people that were missing in Sharkey County when I, I was actually when I was with the sheriff after I left here yesterday almost around noon or maybe a little after uh, they had confirmed they had found those four individuals all alive praise Jesus. And so uh, there are still some possibilities that the numbers uh, could go up. I'll also tell you that we had a conversation this morning. Uh, the initial 25 confirmed fatalities, uh, the number may come down one or two or three, maybe four. And the reason for that is not that the fatalities didn't occur, it's just uh, there's some possibilities that they didn't occur because of the storm. They were for other more natural causes. And so uh, we're monitoring that. It is certainly possible that the number of fatalities will, can, can still go up, but those search and rescue assets, when you have 300 of them, as we had throughout the state yesterday, uh, we do believe that we have searched in most of the rubble. Um, there's still a lot of damage out there. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, at this point, it's really difficult to rebuild communities if you don't have power or if you don't have water. And those are things that through the public assistance uh, that we've been able to secure uh, from our partners at FEMA, uh, we'll be able to get those up and running and operational uh, very, very quickly. And so I can't give you exact numbers at this time, uh, but just know uh, that uh, aside from the number of people that we have back at the state EOC monitoring uh, this weather in South Mississippi today, we also continue to have assets that are uh, monitoring and assessing damage. Um, and the easiest thing uh, that we can do um, is continue to work with our local people to get that done. Can you give yes. us a breakdown on the numbers by each county of deaths? Yeah, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. I believe that there are uh, 13 in Sharkey County. Is that right? I don't know if the mayor stepped away. I believe there's approximately 13 in Sharkey County. I believe there's approximately four. Um, uh, there's approximately four in Humphreys County. Uh, and I know that there's approximately uh, three to four up in Monroe County, but we will get you the exact numbers uh, after this is over, my cats are ripped out. And ages as well, do you have any of that information? Some of that we're not uh, able to give out yet, notifying uh, next of kin, but we'll get you the information that we have when the press conference is over. Governor. Yes, sir. Governor, how important is it for local, state, federal government, even though they might not always get along, to put aside differences? Well, I'll just tell you, it's been my experience in times like this, um, that there is no such thing as politics. Does that have anything to do with politics? All this has to do with is helping our friends and our neighbors. And what you see behind me and what you've seen over the last 36 hours is a united front in working with the administration, working with the state officials, working with the local officials. You know, I, I was talking to uh, uh, Administrator Criswell on the way up here and, and, and the way the Stafford Act, which is the federal act that, that governs these works and has forever and ever, and, and it's the way it ought to work, which is local, national, and natural disasters are state managed, locally executed, and federally supported. And that's the reason that the declaration was so very important that we got done yesterday, because the federal support is there. And we are executing at the local level now, um, and we will continue to do so. Governor. Yes. Um, the legislative session in the state is almost coming to a close. Can you speak to the importance of state lawmakers getting these stuff out before sign dies? 
Yeah, well, look, we, you know, we, we have an disaster trust fund in Mississippi. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this, uh, I'm not proud of this fact, but we do deal uh, with natural disasters regularly. Uh, we, we made a request sometime yesterday uh, of the um, Senator Hobson, who is the chairman of appropriations that represents part of this county, maybe all of this county. Uh, we made a, a, a request to Speaker Gunn, who was up here uh, with Senator Hobson yesterday, uh, to give us approximately $5 million to, to get started. Uh, we will have the resources, though. We are going to have the resources to do whatever is necessary uh, to work with our federal partners. Yes, sir. Governor, in Kentucky and Mayfield, when this happened about a year and a half ago, one of the long-term issues they've uh, dealt with was small businesses and businesses coming back. People didn't want to move back or rebuild because they didn't have jobs. What is the state and the federal government going to do to ensure that businesses also get to rebuild? Well, I will tell you that, and that's a, that's a great question. And, and, um, and I will tell you, I, I spoke to... Um, I don't know how many countless governors yesterday, uh, Republican and Democrat governors, that were reaching out to help. And I had a great conversation with Governor Bashir yesterday uh, and the lessons learned from that storm. Because that one, similar to this, you know, we've, we've had a lot of tornadoes in Mississippi, but but storm that had such significant damage from one side of the state all the way to the other, um, obviously uh, we don't see every single day. And so uh, two issues, one that you mentioned and one that's equally as important. Number one, you can't rebuild a community if nobody can move back. And in, in some communities that have been damaged, what we've seen is that there are a lot of residences that have gotten significant damage, but you could probably live in them. Any of you that have toured back here behind me know there aren't very many residences back here that can be that can be lived in. And so I talked to um, the secretary and the administrator this morning. Uh, the, the two primary objectives that we have before us, is number one is potential housing, of both short-term, intermediate term, and long-term. Potential housing for those residents, because as I mentioned earlier, uh, the guy that I was talking to, he said his mom and daddy are living with him in Greenville, but they don't want to live with him in Greenville. <laughs> they want to live right here, and I get it. And so we've got to make, uh, we got to make a, um, we got to work hard to make sure that, that once we can get the debris cleaned up, do we have opportunities for residents to come back and live here? Because if this community is going to be rebuilt, people got to have a place to live. And the second thing, which is critically important, is small business assistance. We've always worked with the Small Business Administration uh, on every single one of these disasters uh, with MEMA, and we, we are committed to doing it here to make sure that every federal asset and every federal resource is available for our small businesses here in this area, but really throughout the state because there's a lot of, lot of damage. I hey, see no other questions. I just want to again thank every single one of you for being here. Thank all of our partners from the state and federal government. Um, thank you for being here, and God bless. Okay, thank y'all.